Welcome. This is Herman C. from EMS Hong Kong. Today, we are very delighted to host a webinar titled, Learn More About Hong Kong's Latest Sustainable Finance and ESG Development. This is the first webinar of our Family Office series. Today, Family Office is paying significant amount of attention to the development of ESG. It is because ESG investment has become a key aspect of the portfolio investment, in particular under the COVID-19 environment. Hong Kong being an international financial center has developed a lot of ESG initiatives from the regulators and private enterprises. It has the potential to become an ESG investment hub. As such, we have invited some very qualified speakers to our panel discussion today. They are Ms. Susanna Wong, Senior Manager, Market Outreach Division, External Department of Hong Kong Monetary Authority. Ms. Grace Ho, Managing Director, Head of Green and Sustainable Finance, Markets Division of Hong Kong Exchanges and Clearing Limited. Ms. Charlie Huang, Head of Sustainable Capital Markets, Global Markets, APEC of BNP Paribas. Now, I would like to invite our Director General, Mr. Phillip, Mr. Stephen Phillips, to give a welcome remark to our audience. Mr. Phillips, please. Well, Herman, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, uh, as Herman said, this is the first in what will be a series of family offices webinars. And today focus on the important, even hot topics of sustainable finance and ESG. And um, for those of you who don't know Invest Hong Kong, we're a department of the Hong Kong SAR government tasked with attracting international and mainland investment to Hong Kong. And across all the sectors with which we work, we see ever more interest in both green finance and the ESG. And to be honest, I see this only becoming even more important. With Hong Kong's commitment to net zero by 2050, the country's commitment by 2060, this is only going to fuel even more rapid developments in this space, both in the real economy and within financial and professional services. Of course, this is also highly relevant to the family office space which is also an area where we think Hong Kong can see considerable growth with new family offices setting up here, whether from the mainland, from the rest of Asia, or indeed from all four corners of the world. To that end, we're setting up a dedicated family office team with the support of the FSTB, working with a whole range of different stakeholders, FSDC, the regulators, and of course, the family office sector. And my colleague Dixon will share a little bit more information about our plans in a moment or two. As we all know, family offices have a wide range of interests and objectives beyond wealth preservation and growth. So I thought maybe to set the scene for our discussions this afternoon, I could just share some observations um, and Pat perhaps some notable trends that I think might be shaping um, the future. Firstly, um, a lot of the new family offices are built upon newly generated wealth, particularly from the mainland um, and other parts of Asia. We're seeing more and more desire for more diversified um, and direct investment portfolios. We're seeing more appetite for collaborative work between family offices. We're seeing a greater focus in tech and emergent industries. Um, in part, that relates to the innovation agenda in Hong Kong, in part to the rapid development of the Greater Bay Area. Um, there's definitely this greater focus on social responsibility, sustainable development, and in essence, really impact. I think we're also seeing a move to more and more specialization and professionalism. And that particularly is noticeable amongst the Asian family office community. And then finally, there's that growing recognition that family offices have this broader role in terms of social responsibility. 
So what all of this suggests to me is that there's really good prospects for a lot of growth in impact investment, in ESG, in sustainable finance, right here in Hong Kong. And I would add also philanthropy to that mix. Um, we already have a, a vibrant philanthropic sector, um, but I think there's much more that we'll see in the years to come. So undoubtedly, there's a lot to discuss and explore this afternoon. We've got a great lineup of speakers, far more expert than I in these fields. And I'm sure that the discussions are gonna be both informative and stimulating. So once again, thank you very much for joining us. And I really do hope that you find the discussions this afternoon fruitful. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. We are also very honored that we have Mr. Joseph Chen, Under Secretary for Financial Services and the Treasury, to give an opening remark for his webinar. Mr. Chen, please. Stephen, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my great pleasure joining you at today's webinar on Hong Kong's latest sustainable finance and ESG developments. First of all, I would like to thank Invest Hong Kong for hosting today's virtual event, where a panel of high profile speakers will be sharing their expertise and insight from their respective perspective as regulators or market practitioners on this very timely and important topic. As today is the first webinar of the Family Office webinar series, let me first take this opportunity to share with you how Hong Kong's financial service industry has performed in 2020 amid the evolving situation of the COVID-19. With our robust financial infrastructure and sound regulatory regime, Hong Kong's link exchange rate system and the trading, clearing and settlement of our stock markets and derivative markets have been operating smoothly throughout 2020. In fact, the total amount of bank deposits rose by 5.4% and the net inflow of 50 billion US dollars in aggregate into the Hong Kong dollar system is observed since April last year. In equities, in 2020, the average daily turnover of the Hong Kong stock market and the fund raised through IPO have increased by 49% and 27% over the previous year respectively, when we ranked number two globally and number one in Asia in terms of funds raised through IPOs. In bond markets, Hong Kong is the largest center for arranging Asian international bond issuance in Asia last year. In private wealth management, Hong Kong ranked number two in the world and number one in Asia by asset under management AUM in 2019. While the 2020 figures are not yet officially published, indicative numbers from major private banks suggest a double digit growth last year from the already strong base. We also observed growth in other segments last year, including the increase in number of licensed corporations registered with SFC and the increase in the number of asset managers in Hong Kong. In addition, following the enactment of the limited partnership fund regime last, last August, over 100 limited partnership funds have already registered in Hong Kong. Of course, Hong Kong also remains the region's insurance hub as we rank number one in the region in terms of both insurance density and the concentration of insurers. With our status as Asia's leading international financial center, Hong Kong is well positioned to be the sustainable finance and ESG hub of the region. And the Hong Kong SL government is committed to promoting the development of green and sustainable finance, encouraging institutions to conduct relevant investment, financing, and certification activities and attracting top-notch institutions and talents to Hong Kong to provide the relevant services. Earlier this year, we successfully offered the second batch of the government green bonds totaling 2.5 billion US dollars, among which the 30-year tranche is the longest tenor bond issued by the government and the longest tenor US dollar denominated government bond in Asia to date. As announced, by our financial secretary in the 2021 to 22 budget. We plan to issue green bonds regularly and expand the scale of the government green bond program. 
we propose to double the borrowing ceiling of the program to 200 billion Hong Kong dollars to allow for further issuance of green bonds totaling 175.5 billion Hong Kong dollars within the next five years, having regard to the market situation on that. This will also give us more room for piloting the issuance of green bonds that involves more types of currencies, project types, and insurance channels, thereby further enriching the green finance ecosystem in Hong Kong. We also plan to issue retail green bonds for the participation of the general public. The financial secretary also announced that we will consolidate the existing pilot bond grant scheme and the green bond grant scheme, which will both expire at mid 2021 into a green and sustainable finance grant scheme to provide subsidy for eligible bond issuers and loan borrowers to cover the expenses on bond issuance and external review services. This new scheme will last for three years. In fact, we have seen sustainable finance gaining popularity and market traction in Hong Kong in recent years. The cumulative green bonds arranged and issued in Hong Kong amounted to 26 billion US dollars by the end of 2019. And the volume in 2019 is actually 2.5 times of that in 2017. We've also seen green bonds issued in Hong Kong by local, mainland and overseas issuers. Multilateral agencies, including the World Bank, European Investment Bank and Asian Development Bank have also made use of Hong Kong's platform to issue green bonds. In addition to tra traditional green bonds, we've also seen the world's first real estate sector's green convertible bond, Asia's first green retail certificate of deposits, the world's first Guangdong Hong Kong Macau Greater Bay Area green bond, as well as the first offshore ESG Asia's ETF issued or listed in Hong Kong. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hong Kong SL government is joining hands with the financial sector and relevant stakeholders to leverage our role as a leading international financial center to mobilize capital towards sustainable projects in the region and enhance Hong Kong's position as a green and sustainable finance hub in the region. Taking forward the strategic plan announced last year by the Green and Sustainable Finance Cross Agency Steering Group. On this note, I would like to once again thank Invest Hong Kong for organizing today's event, and I wish you all a future blessed with thriving and sustainable businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chen. As this webinar is first of our family office series, I would like to ask Mr. Dixon Wong, our Head of Financial Services, to give you an introduction of family office services at Invest Hong Kong. Mr. Wong, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Chen, uh, Mr. JC, as well as uh, the panelists. Uh, first of all, I think uh, it's my pleasure to share with all of you about the uh, Family Office Initiatives. And I can give an introduction of uh, Invest Hong Kong International Network, which slightly uh, explained by Mr. Phillips, as well as our uh, the new team, uh, which is called the Global Family Office Team. And first of all, I think in Hong Kong's budget 20. 21 and 22, the financial secretary said that the Hong Kong government will introduce a uh, subsidy for OFC established or redomiciled in Hong Kong and the tax concession for carried interest issued by private equity funds uh, operating in Hong Kong that will soon be offered. So these are all particularly relevant for the family office structure and the investors to consider. And besides, the financial secretary also restated the government's target, uh, in particular in this uh, ESG, uh, in uh, sustainable investing to achieve the carbon neutrality uh, before 2050. So with the intention to update Hong Kong's climate uh, action plan to set out more proactive strategies and measures to reduce carbon uh, emissions and to take forward the strategic plan announced by the Green and Sustainable Finance Cross uh, agency steering group, uh, which is uh, a lot of uh, other key members, such as Hong Kong MA, Sort Exchange. And I'm sure Grace and uh, the panelists will talk uh, the details of all this uh, on this. So, with uh, the high profile distinguished speakers today, surely audience will uh, know more about the trends and developments of the Hong Kong uh, investment funds market 
Hong Kong's unique position as an international capital market and leading asset uh, center, asset management center, further enhanced with measures uh, in recent years for Hong Kong to remain competitive. So I will explain a bit more uh, uh, through the slides. Hold on for a second. Can you see that? Yep. Great, thank you. Um, to give you an overview of uh, Invest Hong Kong structure. So uh, the structure is actually designed and supported by sectors in Hong Kong as the headquarters. As you can see on your left-hand side on the screen, the sector specialist group, uh, financial service and family office. Apart from these two teams, we also have other sector teams specializing in each of the particular uh, pillar sectors, including innovation, start, uh, transport, consumer products, and creative industry, etc. And on top of that, we also have investment promotion units, uh, which are lo located across the group. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, Hong Kong is part of the, uh, the overall map, and uh, that we have other offices, office uh, across the group, providing market uh, promotion as well as on the ground support. And on the left-hand side, bottom of the left-hand side, the International Mainland Business Development Group, uh, which is actually the, uh, the very important part of our uh, structure, and also uh, as a liaison point for all the uh, trading, all the leads, and during the generating projects. So Family Office is part of the new uh, financial and fintech and professional services cluster. So this line, in terms of collaboration with stakeholders, this is a very important one. Invest Hong Kong offers a wide range of uh, customized services to support uh, financial services uh, and as well as family office set up in Hong Kong. Uh, we are also a central point of contact uh, that can connect investors with other relevant government agency regulators. Uh, such as Hong Kong MA, SFC, as well as Insurance Authority, and also Stock Exchange of Hong Kong. And there are other engagement and collaborations with industry uh, key stakeholders included, but not limited to international association, consulate generals, uh, ecosystem partner collaboration, and market players, such as the banks and service providers, for example, Big Four. And the mission of the new team uh, Invest Hong Kong's global family office team. As you know, uh, Hong Kong is one of the world's leading international financial centers alongside London and New York. An important segment is that uh, of our family office, which has flourished in uh, recent years, uh, becoming an important uh, growth segment in the wealth and asset management industry. So against this background, uh, the government strongly believes that there's even more potential to grow here. Uh, in the 2020 policy address, uh, the Hong Kong chief executive announced the government's ambitions to develop the city into a regional hub for family offices. With the full support uh, from the financial services and the treasury bureau, uh, the global family office team will be a collaborative effort with key stakeholders, uh, for example, Hong Kong MA, SFC, FSDC, with the objectives of positioning Hong Kong as a leading uh, family office hub in Asia, uh, providing one-stop platform with exclusive and bespoke services to mainland and overseas investors to facilitate the setting up uh, of family office in the city, and encouraging and supporting family offices already established in Hong Kong to expand their operations and business in the, <coughs> in the city and also facilitating discussions between family offices and key stakeholders, regulators, and government uh, departments. Last but not the least, building significant family office presence in Hong Kong. So our dedicated team, uh, we, we are in the process of hiring the professionals here in Hong Kong, and also we are uh, hiring people uh, in the key cities uh, to cover Hong Kong, mainland, ASEAN, Middle East, Europe, and Americas. Uh, we, we just talked about the global network of Invest Hong Kong. Um, 
we now focus on uh, family office and financial services team, our global geographical coverage of financial services team, uh, and also the family office team. Uh, one of our key mission is to set up the de de dedicated teams to set up promotions of our advantages in both uh, local and other major markets and offer one-stop support services to mainland and overseas family offices that are interested in establishing a presence here in the city. So the services provided by financial services, uh, the target clients are those uh, bank, securities companies, uh, PE, VC, uh, and also the brokerage companies. So on the right-hand side, family office, they are more focused on the family office, uh, ultra high number of individuals or high number of individuals who are interested uh, to establish a presence in Hong Kong. And our services is not just uh, lending assistance, uh, su such as, well, not just including the basic ones, such as the company set up, visa licensing, but we are also helping to ensure the entire ecosystem is further enhanced, for example, the trust and wealth advisory. And in this topic, ESG, green, sustainable, uh, in, impact investing, and more like philanthropy as highlighted by Stephen earlier, uh, as well as we have other sector teams that we can leverage the network and resources as well as the expertise. For example, the FinTech team here, startup teams here, the technology team, in particular, the recent trend on the biotech, healthcare, healthcare products, uh, of course, talent attraction and development. Here's actually the, the summary of the services that from the planning to set up uh, and implementation of our services of the new companies. So uh, from our Asian uh, family office perspective, here are some of the typical focus of the Asian family office. For example, preserving the family legacy, keeping the family and wealth together, reinforcing uh, the family values and goals and governance, insurance, uh, clear succession planning, etc. On the last column, they are also actually looking not just on the wealth, the investment side, but also looking at those non-financial side, uh, which is also important considerations from a family office investors perspective, such as ESG, philanthropy, these are these sort of important uh, consideration, and I'm sure the, the panelists will talk more about uh, all these topics. Last but not the least, uh, Family Office is a strategic initiative, uh, so it is fully supported by the Financial Services and the Treasury Bureau. We are working closely with a number of key stakeholders, including yourself, the Bureau, market players, etc., to deliver the greatest achievements and positive impact. So to continue working with the stakeholders in 2021, seek for new collaborations, uh, new initiatives, and or across a number of different activities. So the above, uh, this is actually the uh, main screen uh, of our latest publications of MS Hong Kong and uh, family office related subjects in collaboration with the key stakeholders and the relevant regulators. Uh, here are all available in our website as well. If you need anything from me or you have any interested uh, investor who are, you know, maybe would like to know more about family office, financial services, feel free to let us know. We are more than happy to assist and provide our bespoke services. I, stop, I pause here. I, I pass over back to you, Herman. Thank you, Dixon. Thank you very much uh, for your insightful uh, and with introduction of our family office services. Now, I would like to start the panel discussions. Maybe I will start with um, Hong Kong MA first. Susanna, would you please tell us uh, what Hong Kong MA has done to support the ESG development in Hong Kong? Sure, um, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Herman and Invest Hong Kong for inviting me to the family the office webinar today. I'm very happy to be here. The HKMA wears three different hats in supporting the ESG development in Hong Kong, which is a unique position that is not common in other regions. We serve as the bank regulator, the manager of the exchange funds, and the market developer at the same time. Just let me walk you through what we have been doing in the green and sustainable financing space. First of all, as a bank regulator, the HKMA is pushing forward a green banking framework, which allows banks to assess 
and manage cl global climate risks. We're now undergoing the third phase of green policy development, which will focus on implementation and monitoring, as well as evaluation of banks' progress in adopting green and sustainable banking. Secondly, as the manager of the exchange fund, we embrace responsible investing and the environmental, social, and governance principles. It is now an integral part of our investment criteria, our investment process, and our asset allocation decisions. Thirdly, we're the market developer to push for green finance development in the Asia region. The HKMA has launched the Alliance for Green Commercial Banks with the International Finance Corporation in November 2020. This is a very exciting project that my team is currently working on. Thank you. Thank you. Um, then another development is, um, how about the green capital markets? Uh, I would like to know more about uh, what Hong Kong MA has done in this aspect. Certainly. The HKMA has been assisting the government in implementing bond issuances under the Government Green Bond Program. In order to raise market awareness and create demonstrative effects, the government successfully launched the inaugural US dollar 1 billion green bond in 2019, and another US dollar 2.5 billion of green bonds in January this year, showing our firm dedication to develop Hong Kong into a regional green finance hub. A piece of good news to share with you is that by the end of 2019, the cumulative issuance of green bonds in Hong Kong has amounted to US dollar 26 billion. While we do not have the 2020 figure yet, our estimates show that Hong Kong is gradually evolving into a regional green finance hub that captures the ESG opportunities. Riding on the success and heating market demand for continued issuances, the financial secretary proposed in the budget the plan to double the borrowing ceiling of the program to Hong Kong dollar 200 billion to allow for further issuance of green bonds totaling Hong Kong dollar 175.5 billion with the next five years, making Hong Kong one of the few issuers that have a dedicated green bond program. The HKMA assisted government green bond issuance has helped to raise market awareness showcase best practice, provide a good demonstration effect, and set important new benchmark for potential issuers in Hong Kong and the region. Going forward, the Hong Kong government will consolidate the pilot bond grant scheme and the green bond grant scheme into green sustainable finance grant scheme, which provides subsidy for eligible bond issuers and loan borrowers to cover their expenses on bond issuance and external review services. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my last question to you is, um, as a international financial center, um, what Hong Kong MA's international collaboration in the green finance uh, market uh, with other uh, global markets in the world? Good question, Herman. I think one of our flagship projects on green finance can address your question. The HKMA has signed a new partnership with international finance Corporation, a member of the World Bank Group, in November 2020 to promote the development of green commercial banks in the global financial market. With the HKMA being the founding member and first regional anchor for the Asia chapter of the Alliance, Hong Kong will serve as the green finance hub for commercial banks in Asia. Going forward, the HKMA and IFC will jointly launch targeted initiatives and campaigns in the region to undertake green finance research organize tailor-made capacity building programs, develop innovative green financial products in the capital market, and last but not least, we will provide practical guidance for banks to develop their own roadmap to mainstream green finance. All these initiatives aim to promote the development of green finance in order to meet the ever-growing appetite from investors, private wealth managers, and family offices enabling them to capture the huge opportunities in ESG investments. In fact, IFC estimated that the climate-related investment opportunities across emerging markets in the next decade are going to be as large as US dollar 23 trillion. This presents huge opportunities for family offices to create positive impacts while achieving their objectives of creating and passing on wealth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susanna. Uh, now, may I turn to Grace. 
Grace, I know that you have been very, very busy in setting up stage uh, at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So uh, thank you very much for your time. So I would like to start with the first question. Uh, could you tell us uh, what is the Stock Exchange journey in ESG development? Thank you, Herman, for the question. My thanks to Invest Hong Kong for inviting me to this panel. Thank you very much. Um, HKEX's journey in ESG actually started more than eight years ago. And ESG has been core to our purpose as both a market operator and a market regulator, as well as a listed corporate since then. As a regulator, we first introduced ESG disclosure requirements in 2013, and we have made changes to our rules every two years in order to keep pace with market development and investors' demand. Last year, we amended our listing rules to require, firstly, a new mandatory statement from the board, setting out the board's consideration of ESG matters. We want boards to incorporate ESG strategy into their overall corporate strategy. Second, we require a new disclosure requirement on climate-related issues. We know that climate change has the potential to profoundly change the physical world in which we live in, and companies must strengthen the management of climate-related financial risks. Third, we want companies to look at setting targets in relation to environmental KPIs. And last but not the least, we have upgraded all voluntary disclosure on social KPIs to a comply or explain standard. All these new requirements are very consistent with international best practice. They were formed by the approach pioneered by the Task Force on Climate-Related Financial Disclosures, TCFD's recommendations. The amendments represent a shift away from compliance, tick the box exercise, to management of ESG risks and opportunities. The focus is on board leadership and accountability of ESG. We believe that these new requirements and guidance should significantly improve Hong Kong's regulatory framework for ESG governance and disclosure and position HKEX in Hong Kong as a pioneer in driving ESG disclosure in Asia. Thank you, Herman. Thank you. Um, so may I ask you, what are the latest initiatives of Hong Kong Stock Exchange uh, in the ESG space? Well, you're absolutely right. We've been very busy with stage. Um, last December, HKEX officially launched STAGE to connect the issuers with investors. STAGE stands for Sustainable and Green Exchange. It is Asia's first multi-asset sustainable investment product platform. Our objective is to support the fast-growing global demand for sustainable finance, in particularly in Asia. So overall, there are three main purposes for creating stage. First, we want to increase the ESG information flow. Second, we want to provide a market infrastructure for sustainable asset classes. And third, to provide an alternative to bank finance and private equity for SMEs. At the heart of the stage platform is an online product repository, which as of today features 48 sustainable themed products from leading Asian corporates, including the first ever dual currency climate transition bonds issued by Bank of China, sustainability linked bond issued by New World, as well as um, the bonds listed by the government earlier this year. These HKEX listed sustainable products include social and transition bonds from issues across a variety of sectors. We also have three ESG-related exchange-traded products. Over time, we hope that the scope of product repository will increase across asset class, industry, in Hong Kong and beyond. To address investors' concern on greenwashing, issuers included on stage must provide additional voluntary disclosures on the sustainable investment products, such as the use of proceeds and the annual post issuance reports. This additional information will enable investors to ac uh, access a trusted, easy to use platform for the region's fast growing green sector. We also believe in education and promote awareness 
of ESG and sustainable investing. So Stage is also an online repository of green and sustainable finance resources. We want to knowledge share with the market as well as to continue the stakeholder engagement in sustainable finance. With the launch of Stage, we are seeking to guide future capital flows to support our society's transition towards sustainability. We are therefore actively encouraging all regional issuers of green and sustainable products to consider application for inclusion on Stage, which is free, by the way. Thank you, Herman. Thank you very much, uh, Grace. Um, my final question to you is, uh, what do you think as the important next steps for Hong Kong to grow the sustainable financial market? Thank you, Herman. One of the hallmarks of Hong Kong is the close collaboration between the public sector and the private sector. I believe this close collaboration is important uh, in the sustainable finance sector as well. Earlier, um, we heard about the establishment of the Green and Sustainable Finance Cross-Agency Steering Group. The other members are HKEX, the Environmental Bureau, the Financial Services and Treasury Bureau, the Insurance Authority, and the Mandatory Profit and Fund Scheme Authority. This steering group was actually established by the SFC and HKMA. This group is to coordinate the management of climate and financial um, environmental risk, accelerate the growth of green and sustainable finance in Hong Kong, and to support the government's uh, climate strategies. This is to drive that all agencies to sing from one hymn sheet. All relevant sectors, such as financial institutions, asset managers, insurers, and listed companies will be required to work together and with the agencies to strengthen the green ecosystem for a more sustainable future. Companies need to raise capital to finance the transition to a low carbon economy and more sustainable business world. HKEX can provide a platform for raising sustainable finance, develop new sustainable finance products and indices, and support market education for both investors and issuers. Herman, if it's okay with you, I would just want to share some data, um, yes, which is um, about the amount of money that is needed um, to move us to a more sustainable future. So according to a recent report by the Global Financial Markets Association, in order to achieve a scenario of limiting temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius, the volume of climate aligned finance will have to grow to over 150 trillions in the next three decades, representing an average investment of three to $5 trillion uh, every year globally in order to decarbonize 10 sectors that represent 75% of global emissions. So for example, the power sector would need around $39 trillion upfront CapEx investments for renewable energy generation. Now the relevance is that the same report says that the most significant regional investment demand is here in Asia, estimated to be $66 trillion. So meeting the financing needs of these decarbonization levers will require not only a significant scaling of the climate finance market, but also changes in financing solutions. So we need the help of family offices to devise all those financing solutions. Thank you, Herman. Thank you very much, uh, Grace. Um, Chani, uh, in addition to an uh, ESG banker, you are also the Secretary General of Hong Kong Greens Finance Association. So could you tell us what about the initiatives of uh, Hong Kong GFA to promote green and sustainable finance in Hong Kong? Thanks a lot, Herman. Certainly, I'm wearing two hats today uh, in this session. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I, I always joke that you know my my I have two two part two jobs. You know, one is Hong, uh, BNP Paribas and one is at Hong Kong GFA. So for Hong Kong Green Finance Association, we are a relatively young or very young organization, founded in 2018. But as far as ESG or sustainable finance concern, uh, we do believe that you know we we serve our purpose uh, 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 with a lot of proudness. So Hong Kong Green Finance Association creates a platform that offers channels and opportunities to facilitate the development of green finance and sustainable investment in Hong Kong and beyond. And it really aims to mobilize private and public resources 
and talents in developing, you know, green finance, sustainable finance policies uh, to promote uh, uh, business transactions, product innovation within the finance sector. So our main goal is to position Hong Kong as the leading international green finance hub uh, by providing access and opportunities you know, for uh, a wide range of financial institutions from asset owners, family offices, uh, asset managers to banks, insurance companies and corporates to participate in, 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 uh, in sustainable finance uh, uh, products and, 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 and market development, right? And not just in Hong Kong, but in mainland China and in markets along Belt and Road, you know, so really across border. And this is very much in line with the global trend uh, of implementing, implementing UN SDG and, and the Paris Agreement, as well as, you know, Hong Kong's objective uh, to achieve net zero and, and the country's objective uh, uh, towards carbon neutrality in 20, by 2060. So our activities per se or initiatives are very much organized through our working groups because we are a member-driven organization. So we, we have eight working groups right now, uh, namely green and sustainable banking, you know, cater for the banks. Um, green and sustainable uh, private equity, to, which is a newly funded working group to reflect the new membership that we receive from the private equity uh, community, as well as you know, green and sustainable finance, real estate, green bonds and product innovation, which is certainly a, a key area in terms of uh, product innovation. ESG disclosure and integration, which is very important, I think, to the audience here who are family offices, uh, family trust, uh, 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 active as uh, uh, active investors uh, in ESG integration, as well as policy research, green insurance, and external collaborations. So we always encourage you know, our members, uh, which is about almost 150 organizations now, to take part in the working groups, work with us, uh, our members, uh, your peers, um, together with public um, uh, sector uh, players like the Exchange, Hong Kong MA, uh, as well as you know, the, the uh, cross-agency group to really push the agenda together because you know, like I said, the objective is to grow Hong Kong into a sustainable finance hub. We need the entire industry to, to move in that direction. Yeah, thank you. Um, I understand one of the challenges uh, at uh, ESG is to set a common standard. So mm -hmm. does Hong Kong GFA work with overseas organizations to benchmark and promote green and sustainability standards? That's certainly a, a very important focus for us uh, when it comes to ESG harmonization or standardization, because you know we are we're in Hong Kong, we're looking at Hong Kong as an international market, right? So obviously we want to facilitate the international flow. If investors do not regard this particular bond or, or fund as ESG aligned, you know, you know, I don't think we achieve our purpose. So we do actually work with our uh, peers or partners very uh, frequently uh, in this global discussion. Uh, you know, regionally, you know, for example, uh, or, or within greater China, you know, we do, uh, we are a sister uh, uh, commit, uh, um, association to the mainland green finance committee where, you know, we do provide uh, our uh, view or, or perspective, you know, to China's development and vice versa. Uh, at the same time, we also liaise with various international initiatives uh, um, uh, like uh, ISO uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and other uh, SC4S, for example, uh, to, to, to connect, you know, the dots and connect the markets. So uh, obviously there's a lot of discussion just within Hong Kong in terms of international harmonization. So we, you know, Grace, Susanna, you know, these are our working bodies uh, uh, where we do contribute actively um, uh, to provide our opinions. So the working groups do respond to a lot of the policy uh, consultations, you know, for example, in the ESG working group, right, we, we have done 
um, a number of res uh, joint responses uh, to SFC's uh, uh, circulars on ESG funds, IFR foundation consultation on paper on sustainability reporting and SFC's contribution paper on climate risks. So these do fit into um, the local or um, policy makers, regulators uh, uh, initiative at the same time fit into global discussions. I see. Okay, understand. Um, as an ESG banker, could you tell us about the developments of ESG products uh, to investors? Um, I think the market has accelerated a lot uh, uh, in recent um, years or months. Uh, if I just look at 2020 uh, alone, right, a very disruptive year with COVID sweeping the world, uh, no one can be immune uh, to, to that. But we, we have also seen the growing awareness in ESG. So investments in ESG funds hit all time high in 2020 uh, with 347 billion US dollar uh, of inflows and 700 new funds uh, launched globally. And, and these funds uh, and AUMs are cross asset classes from equities, private equities, uh, fixed income and, and to alternative investments, right? So the numbers that speak for itself in terms of demand for ESG uh, uh, investment. Um, so I think it's certainly very encouraging to see the growing awareness as a result of COVID because we are facing parallel connected crisis. Uh, if you think about COVID, a health crisis that trigger into socioeconomic you know, challenge and, now, and, and, and also connected to climate change and biodiversity loss, right? So I think the investment mindset has turned uh, the AUMs are already there to support various ESG uh, integrations. So I think in, in speaking of the, the bond market, which you asked many of the panelists, right? Um, and I think it's taking an advantage of that kind of high demand. So supply of sustainable bonds globally has increased by 80% in 2020 alone. And, and Joseph and Grace have, and, and Susanna have all shared that, you know, accumulated issuance in Hong Kong itself uh, have reached 26 billion uh, uh, as of the end of 2020. So uh, we continue to see the market to grow uh, 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 in a very bullish environment, despite of the volatility and the crisis or, uh, or uh, uncertainty that we face. Thank you. So thank you, every one of you, of your great insight in ESG development. So uh, we have some questions from the audience. So uh, let's just let me uh, read it out. Uh, I think the first question may be to uh, Susanna. Um, in terms of Hong Kong MA's investment decisions, uh, could you tell us more about how the exchange fund supports Hong Kong MA's initiative in turning green. Sorry, Susanna, I think you have to uh, unmute. Go. Right, the HKMA is uh, actually leading by example through incorporating ESG into our investment process of the exchange fund. I see. Um, let me give you a bit more color on how HKMA's exchange fund incorporates ESG into our investment process, which can be a reference for family offices. In our public market investments, the HKMA has incorporated ESG factors in the credit risk analysis of the exchange fund's bond portfolio. We have also invested in green bonds since 2015, and we're amongst the early investors in this market. We will continue to grow the green bond market portfolio by direct investment or investing in green bond funds. More recently, the HKMA has also invested in social and sustainability bonds, which is a trend among global investors, especially after COVID. On the public equity side, the HKMA has embarked on ESG themed mandates in equities investments. For Passive portfolios, we are adopting ESG equity indices as benchmark. 
For active portfolios, we will continue to engage active equities managers to apply ESG factors to the investments. In our private market investments, ESG evaluation um, is a mandatory part of due diligence of every single investment mandate. We have also started investing in renewables since 2013 in the energy sector. For our real estate portfolio, the HKMA has invested in green buildings and warehouses with green and sustainable features. Thank you. Thank you very much, Susanna. Um, second question. Uh, probably for Grace. Um, from a commercial standpoint, what are the ESG opportunities in Hong Kong? Um, first of all, come on to stage and you can see all the um, products there for ESG investment opportunities. And uh, for that, I must thank bankers such as Chow Ni for bringing all those um, to Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, so uh, in terms of opportunities, not just in Hong Kong, you know, we have also got the Wealth Management Connect and thanks to HKMA, uh, as Susanna team and team, um, we, we, we have a lot of opportunities in the Greater Bay Area. So as a conduit um, to and from mainland China, Hong Kong is an ideal green finance hub. There are basically substantial commercial opportunities for the Hong Kong financial sector. Um, we are already a well-established international finance center. I don't need to convince any of the audience. Uh, we have enormous pool of global capital, uh, proper business infrastructure and regulatory environment. I think the most unique part is that the central government has designated Hong Kong as the green finance hub of the Greater Bay Area. Um, and so we are very much part of the newly inaugurated uh, Guangdong, Hong Kong, Greater Bay Area, Macau Green Finance Alliance, which HKGFA has introduced us to. Um, this alliance aims to promote research and incubate green investments that will benefit the Greater Bay Area. Um, and the alliance is supporting a number of projects, three of which are led by Hong Kong, the Green Building Project, which aims to create green finance opportunities in the building industry, Blockchain Solar Project, which aims to deliver innovative funding structures and new classes of digital sustainable investments to accelerate solar energy projects. And Carbon Connect, which seeks to establish a carbon marketplace for cross-border trading. Then there are other projects in Shenzhen, such as uh, Solid Waste Disposal uh, Research Project and the development of Green Supply Chain Financing Action, led by Guangdong. Indeed, the green business potential of the Greater Bay Area is expected to jump fivefold from 2018, 19 billion US dollars to 450 billion US dollars in 2030. So I think I'll end there. The uh, opportunities are endless. Uh, very good, thank you. Um, Okay, uh, final question here from the audience is, what role can Hong Kong play in the global ESG sector? Chowdy, maybe I ask you to answer this question. Uh, that's a very big question, the global ESG sector. Um, I think Hong Kong can, there's still a lot of room to grow in terms of ESG integration, right? If we think from an investment perspective, certainly, um, uh, we want we want to see more funds, you know, from asset owners uh, to asset managers fully integrating ESG and putting uh, allocating real capital to support ESG uh, impacts, ESG outcomes, right? So we have seen some success uh, in the green bond space, um, but I still think we are looking at just the top of the iceberg, a drop of the ocean. Uh, you know, green bond is only, or sustainable bonds is only a few percentage of the total debt capital market. So what, ha what about the rest of the, let's say 95% of the debt capital market? Where is ESG integration, right? So we want to see uh, uh, that kind of transformation in, in the way we, uh, asset managers, asset owners looking at asset uh, from uh, uh, ESG, uh, requirements. So I think there's a huge room to grow. So the AUMs need to need, need to attach to ESG criteria. And at the same time, you know, uh, investors, both asset owners and asset managers need to look at impacts achieved. Uh, I think that's certainly what uh, the market is, 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 is focusing on right now. If you look at EMEA, it's not just about all oh, selection criteria, fulfilling, you know, various policies or, or, or standards, but 
can we quantify the impacts at, across portfolio, right? So if, you know, at a portfolio level, uh, funds have the confidence to say that, you know, through our investment, we have, we have reduced GHG uh, greenhouse gas emissions by X percent. Um, and, and that percentage is in alignment at least to uh, uh, either the local market uh, commitment or, or the global Paris agreement uh, timeline. That's also a huge uh, step forward, you know, in my opinion. And obviously there are many things that we haven't tackled. Earlier I mentioned, you know, we are also in biodiversity, biodiversity crisis and Hong Kong plays a, 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 can play a vital role because we are connecting Asia to the world, right? So, and, and half of the global uh, biodiversity hotspots are in Asia. So we want to see creative uh, financing or investments to support these so-called unbankable projects. So I don't think we have an answer for that yet. So here is, I don't, I don't have the answer, uh, but more a uh, call uh, for action uh, from family offices, you know, on, on this line. Okay, so maybe I can just summarize that there. We still have a lot of room to grow in Hong Kong as a, a ESG investment hub. Okay, um, my final question to, um, to um, every one of you. Um, as we are also trying to promote a uh, family office uh, for Hong Kong as well, and this is part of our mandate of Invest Hong Kong. So may I ask each one of you to give a, uh, a very short 20 second advice uh, on how to attract family office to come to Hong Kong. So maybe I again start from uh, Susanna. Thank you. Um, as an international finance hub, I think Hong Kong's green financial market is quite well established and provides a wide range of green and sustainable products that fit different risk appetite and investment objectives. Therefore, we welcome family offices from all over the world to, expo to explore our wide spectrum of green financial products that you can choose from based on your own investment appetite. Thank you. And I encourage all of you to take advantage of what Hong Kong has to offer as well. Okay, thank you very much. Grace? Uh, I completely agree with Susanna. Hong Kong has a lot to offer. With one in every two newly minted dollar denominated billionaires last year were in China. And Asian families placing increasing importance on philanthropy and social responsibilities. It seems clear that sustainable investing is going to loom large on the Asian wealth management agenda in the years to come. So please come and set up family office in Hong Kong and with our stage and with all the professionals here on the panel, um, we here are here to help guide your future um, generations of capitals um, to support Asians transition towards sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chani. My two cents would be, as you can hear from all the speakers right, uh, so far, we are developing Hong Kong into a sustainable finance hub. And we are talking about the entire ecosystem from policy development to market facilitation to uh, capacity building, right? There are just many building blocks to make it into a sustainable finance hub. And the and 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 it's already well said that there are a lot of opportunities, but what I wanted to add is that the ESG banker capabilities you know, in the region are also in Hong Kong. So in order to guide you in your impact investing you know, at family offices, I believe Hong Kong can also offer that talent, that capability to provide that regional view and international view and opportunity to support you in ESG. Okay, wow. Um, time flies, so uh, I think it's come to our end of our webinar. So I thank every one of you to be our uh, panelists, and uh, we learned a lot today. So I hope our audience uh, also enjoyed the webinar as well. So uh, thank you very much again. So please stay tuned for our next webinar of our family office series. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.